Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to take a look into the case of Kandil Balosh. She was a social media superstar from Pakistan who was murdered by her brother in a so-called honor killing. But was it really? Did she die because she embarrassed her family? Or was there another reason behind her death? Was Kandil's assassination ordered by someone else in a higher position? But first, let's start from the beginning. I always start these stories with background information on the person we are talking about. There are human beings with history, so I find it interesting to know where they come from. Even though most of the times, where they were born doesn't add anything to the events. But with the story of Kandil Balosh, everything from where she was born to how she grew up is a part of the equation which led to her death. So, let's take a look. Kandil was born on March 1st, 1990, in a rural area of Punjab in Pakistan. Her family was very poor, who made a living from local farming. She had six brothers and two sisters. So, picking up on the issue of Kandil coming from a poor family, Kandil was born a woman in a patriarchal society. Men are the rules and women are submissive. Kandil was born a woman and poor. The disparity between the rich and poor in Pakistan is abysmal. The poor are insignificant. The opportunities are not the same. So, a poor woman does not have the same opportunities as a rich woman. Regardless of the laws in Pakistan, a poor woman doesn't enjoy the same rights as a rich woman. So many crimes against poor women go unpunished. And all of this will also add to Kandil's death. She was a woman and she was poor. But Kandil didn't want to conform to society. She didn't want to take the common and expected gender role. Women marry, have children and be submissive. Kandil wanted more. She wanted to study. She liked acting and singing. She liked watching TV. She wanted to be a celebrity. She wanted to break the tradition of what women should be in Pakistan. But in 2008, Kandil was 18 years old. She was forced to marry her mother's cousin and she had a son. The marriage didn't last long. During her marriage, Kandil was beaten and tortured by her husband. So after two years of marriage, she fled. She took her son with her, but unfortunately he got sick and Kandil wasn't financially able to help her son. So she had no choice but to return the boy to her husband. And he would never allow Kandil to see the boy ever again. It's not known how Kandil lived her life until she became famous. She always refrained herself from re answering those questions. She did say she had worked as a hostess on a bus handing out snacks to passengers. Kandil's main goal was to end a cycle of poverty and make herself a celebrity and earn her own money. In 2012, Kandil was in Karachi. She tried and landed small parts in dramas and she was starting to live her dream as being an actress. And in 2014, Kandil auditioned for Pakistan Idol. She was rejected and she was made fun of by the judges. But Kandil didn't stop there. She turned to social media and that's where she skyrocketed. Her posts were very controversial in a highly conservative society. She wanted to break the norm. Some adored her and many others hated her, calling her vulgar names. Her posts consisted of provocative videos of her twerking, dancing in a bikini, taking a bath. She also shocked people when she promised to strip for the cricket national team in 2016. Kandil then started using her social media fame to address a woman's role in Pakistan which was opposite to the conservative expectations of a male dominant society. She would then start to appear regularly on Pakistani talk shows and this would make Kandil make good money and with that she made amends with her family who had disowned her. She rented 
her parents a house in Multan and paid for their living expenses. But one of those shows would actually seal her fate. In June 2016, Kandil appeared on a show and in this show was about people who were against Kandil's behavior. But a TV show host wanted the opinion of someone conservative. Someone who represented the values of religious Pakistan. So they invited Mufti Abdul Kavi. He was a senior Islamic religious scholar. But while during that show, instead of criticizing Kandil, he eventually invited Kandil to meet him in Karachi so he could teach her more about her faith and he wanted to give her guidance. Not long after, the two of them met at a hotel room and this encounter was recorded on a video and pictures and Kandil would post it online. The video would show the religious scholar with drinks and cigarettes during Ramadan caused tremendous backlash online. She would also post a picture of her wearing his signature sheepskin cap. This meeting generated a lot of public uproar. Kwavi was heavily criticized for behaving inappropriately and for associating himself with a woman like Kandil. Eventually, Mufti was suspended from his position from one of Pakistani's religious committees and he was publicly ridiculed. Kandil became a regular on Pakistani current affairs and news programs. Public interest in Kandil was bigger than ever and on several shows she would show up to debate religious scholars. She also received backlash from the encounter. She then refused to apologize to Mufti and she claimed she had unmasked a hypocrite who was deceiving people in the name of Hisla. Eventually, Kandil held a press conference stating she was getting death threats from Mufti Abdul and other people too. And she expected to be protected by the police. But remember what I said, Kandil was a woman and she came from a poor family, regardless of her being a celebrity. So protection from the state would be something that wasn't going to happen. In that video, Kandil made a huge mistake. She made public where she was from, which until then was unknown to people. And by the end of June, Kandil's passport and national identity card was shown in the news. It showed her hometown and her father's name. It also showed Kandil's real name, Fushia Asim. This would be a death sentence to her. Kandil was exposed and her family was exposed. Suddenly, it wasn't just Kandil getting all the backlash. It was also her family, who lived in a conservative community, who then started to put pressure on the family, especially the brothers, saying Kandil had brought shame upon them. Fearing for her life, Kandil seeked refuge at her parents' house, isolating herself. But she would also had to face one of her brothers who was in enraged about her behavior and most importantly he felt ashamed so he said apart from being pressured by the rest of the community to do something he came to the house and threatened to kill her and Kandil did something that would temporarily ease his troubled mind she gave him money problem solved for a while money moves mountains and it can also cure shame however on July 15, 2016, after dinner, Kandil's brother Wasim prepared sweet milk for the family, but the drink had sleeping pills. While the family was asleep, Wasim asphyxiated Kandil to death. Autopsies showed marks on Kandil's body, which also showed Wasim had shut her mouth and nose so she couldn't breathe. Then he placed a blanket over her head. It was Kandil's mother who found her body. Kandil's father was the one who reported Kandil's death to the police. He stated his sons, Haslam and Wasim, had killed Kandil because of her money. On July 16, 2016, Wasim was arrested and then he confessed he murdered his sister because she had brought shame to the family. He also claimed his brother wasn't involved. 
Even though Wasim confessed to the crime, their parents claimed Mufti Abdul instigated the murder and used his influence to make it happen. The most interesting part about this man, who claimed he wasn't involved in the murder of Kandil, was his behavior when the police investigated the crime. He was summoned to give a statement, but he never showed up. And he didn't want to cooperate with the investigation. Eventually, he received a warrant saying he had to appear on a scheduled date in court. When he was there, he was denied bail. And then he ran away and tried to skip town. But the police were still able to arrest him and take him into custody. And when he was going to be questioned, guess what? Conveniently, he started complaining about his heart. Does this look like the behavior of a man who wasn't involved in the murder? What do you think? Wasim was charged with murder of his sister, but it would take a while for trial to take place and he would not stand alone, but he hoped he would be found not guilty. Kandil's parents got a hostile reaction from the community they were living and eventually they were evicted from the house Kandil had rented for them. They also received threats. For a while, the parents stood their ground and hoped for justice for Kandil and that Wasim would be punished. And as time went by, eventually, Wasim and others involved allegedly in the killing went to trial. Kandil's parents then changed their minds and pardoned Wasim for murdering Kandil. According to blood money laws derived from Sharia, murders can be absolved if the victim's relatives forgive the killer. And this is what allegedly Wasim was hoping for. He claimed he did it for honor and for that he hoped the family would forgive him. The family did switch sides but things didn't happen like they thought it would. The police would announce this case didn't apply the blood money law. In 2019, the trial for the murder of Kandil Balash started. Her brother Wasim and six other co-defendants went to trial. This group also included Mufti Abdul Kavi and they all had outpouring support from the people. For us in the West, this is surprising. For them, it's not. At the end of the trial, Wasim was found guilty of murder and his other co-defendants were all acquitted. Wasim was then sentenced to life in prison. Given the publicity in Pakistan and internationally about the case of Kandil Balash, there was a change in the law regarding honor crimes. If the killer is forgiven, the killer still has to serve life in prison. So, this is the story of Kandil Balash, a woman who had more power than she thought, but would only be noticed after she died. And similarly to Kandil, there's many other victims of the so-called honor killings. But interesting enough, in a society where men rule supreme, it's actually women who have to upheld the virtues of honor, even when men behave opposite to what is traditionally expected. It makes you wonder, us who were born into freedom, us in the West, who for the most part take it for granted, freedom, and what is common for us, it's actually a battle for women like Kandil. I'm going to start with Kandil's family, the parents especially. I have watched a documentary from BBC about Kandil's murder and given how conservative the community they lived, I was pleasantly surprised seeing them standing their ground and demanding justice for Kandil, demanding her brother to be punished. But this documentary was from 2017. Fast forward two years, news outlets showed eventually Kandil's parents forgave Wasim and wanted him to be free. So much for honor. How about honoring Kandil? That was just for the cameras. In the end, they sided with the murderer, the assassin. But I also have my theory. I truly believe her parents were pressured to forgive Wasim. 
the individual who likes to think he is actually honorable, but in the eyes of many, he is just a murderer. After learning they had forgiven Wasim, I couldn't help to think they saw Kandil has their meal ticket and their way out of poverty. She was their piggy bank. Loyalty to Kandil was only there while they were receiving money from her. I was honestly disappointed but not actually surprised. This is at the end a place where women are disposable, especially those like Kandil, who were born into poverty and who shook the nation with her provocative post defying what was expected from her. Now Wasim. All I wish for Asim is to every night he goes to sleep, every time he closes his eyes, the ghost of his sister haunts him till the end of his days. Now Mufti Abdul Kavi and my theory of what might have happened. This is all alleged. And I'm taking into account his behavior when he ran away and tried to skip town. When the video came out with Kandil and Mufti, it created a lot of criticism. This man, who presented himself as an example of Islam, was in fact a hypocrite. He was rotten and a disgrace for Islam. He suffered consequences for what he did, which also means he lost favor and power. But most of all, it brought him shame. He was embarrassed by a woman. Allegedly. So, he wanted revenge. And how could he punish Kandil? By having her killed. So, allegedly, it's a theory. He used his connections to put pressure in Kandil's brothers and community to have her killed. And he helped with the events. Allegedly. So, Kandil's death for me, allegedly, had nothing to do with honor. Family honor. It was about someone with more power than her getting revenge for the consequences he had to face. Allegedly. There's one more guilty party in the story. In my opinion, the media and the person who leaked Kandil's real identity and where she was from. They knew what they were doing. They knew it would take only a matter of time for her to be caught. And they knew she was going to meet her death. Before I end this, I highly recommend watching the documentary I mentioned. I'm going to put the link in the description box below. You can also watch Mufti's reaction to her death and he actually kind of threatened the person who was interviewing him. It also includes footage with her parents and other people who, in my opinion, are also responsible for Kandil's death. Please check it out. And to end this, don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell button. Thank you for watching. Don't take your freedom for granted. See you the next time. Stay safe.